They're a bunch of naive realists, and um, I, I don't <laughs> like that. All of you people who are cyberneticists have to deal with naive realists all the time, every day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Do you speak to realism for a moment? To realism? It's an epistemological position, if you like, that is enormously wide because there have been innumerable different kinds of realism. They all have in common, or at least should have in common, the notion that the picture we have of the world is in some way a representation of what is out there. It mostly brings with it the notion that truth means a good match between my picture of the world and what is out there. It's a good likeness, if you like. So, that's why I say if you have understood the principle of constructivism, uh, that's out of bounds. That is just not thinkable any longer. And if it's not thinkable, you realize that almost everything else you have thought before has to be modified. And that is a very difficult and, in some way, painful process. And I think it's, it's very, very understandable that people fight against it. It's about the language with which you see that determines what you see. Yes, always. So how does that come into the framework that you presented in terms of complexity and where I'm looking and so on. Well, it depends on how you look as to what you see. How you look is a level of analysis. Yes, but language is about more than that. I well, language... you can translate it into those terms. I mean, it's not... No, no, I'm not sure about that. Ah. The focus is on language. The idea is that we live in metaphors. Cybernetics is the art and science of manipulating those metaphors, Nip manipulating language, manipulating life. The discourse happens in language. It seems a restricted explanation or definition of cybernetics because it's only taking place in language, but part of those metaphors that work are the formulas that make planes fly and stay, uh, keep them in the air. So, mm -hmm. what is the criteria yeah, for... No, 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 no. I, th I, think, I think we're not listening to what Larry said. When Task says metaphor, he doesn't mean metaphor in the sense of analogy metaphor. He means language. He means living. He means enacting through the words you use. I can take one of those diagrams and I can say, I can think of this as me seeing what's there, yeah. or I can think of this as me having a language in my head which enables me to see what I will see. That's second order. Yes. And I didn't, I didn't quite hear, maybe I missed it, how that fits within your point of view. I don't know. I feel it fits. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it. Somebody help me here. So, so do you say then that it's... It, I, I would say there are different narratives. Which are different narratives? There, when, 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 you're, when you absolutely introduce language into it, it's a different narrative. Yes. Because Which, if, you're using a, if you're using a language of mathematics or using a language of biology, the narratives are different. So let me back it up a little bit. What if you're using the language of cybernetics? So the values with them that allow me to see certain things and disallow me from seeing other things. Yes. So again, if I'm in one of the diagrams, not moving among the diagrams, I can say either I see what's there because it's there, or I can say, second order, I see what I'm able to see because of how I'm seeing. And therefore the challenge is for me to evolve my language to see new things or to see a new way. So this is the distinction between first and second. Am I, am I okay so far? Well, yeah. I'm having difficulty with because it's there. I Good. Want to know because it and where. Good. And you, you need to that. define all of those, otherwise you're dead. So you don't mean that. I don't think I'm. You seem to be put, trying to put me into a box. I don't want to go. No, no, no. I'm trying. To <laughs> no. I'm just trying simply to understand. What I hear is is I see this presentation still as realism, and I, I do. I'm comfortably anti-realist. Well. I heard you say that and that intrigued me initially. Yeah. However, I didn't experience, I didn't experience that in your presentation in that I had the same conflict, not contradiction, but conflict, which means we can resolve it, hopefully. 
as, as Paul did in the sense of your language appeared to be objective, whereas what I hear Paul talking about is this idea of intersubjectivity. Of, I think I was talking about intersubjectivity, I think. I didn't hear it, and I don't think Paul heard it either. I didn't hear it, but I'm happy to have the, the clarification. Yeah. How was it not? Well, because in the end, it's all a matter of how you look at it. And there's lots of different things that could appear. Yeah, but what what's real, what's at? not real, I don't know, and so, I never can know. So let me propose an, an additional diagram. To yes, this. fine. The diagrams you have are about where I'm looking. Another diagram might be the idea that what's there comes to me, as opposed to a filter or a lens. These are terrible analogies. The language with which I see going out and coming back. I'm trying to make a distinction between a real Okay, not very good. Yeah. Uh, I think what you're referring to is that the levels of analysis that you describe, um, they come across as given, but they're not um, what Paul was referring to, is that they're created, and uh, the language with which you create them, basically you say the difference, so actually each one would afford a different language, a different way of looking, um, then it gives you a different, different way of uh, But I, I just want to say once more, and then I'll, I'll let it go. In each individual diagram, I can make a distinction between what I look at and how I look at it. Yes. So I'm worried that well, you're... I'm not sure what... I'm never sure about what I'm looking at. I just have experience. But the, but the idea is that there is something he could be looking at is still there in the language I hear. Yeah. Uh, I don't mean First that. First order. I mean, th that... The world has things in it, but they're not there as things. Good. The thingedness comes from the way that we assert aspects. Beautiful. Okay? <laughs> that image of the mountains is being shown while you say what we see is what we see. It is not what is there. I know. What is there? Something like snow on the TV. And out of that we make all sorts of structures. Some structures are possible, others are not. Out of chaos comes order. Yes, in a way it must be a friendly chaos because it allows us to, to construct an experiential reality that is fairly reliable. Is it friendly because of intersubjectivity? Well, intersubjectivity is important for the construction of our experiential reality because we get confirmation from other people that what we have constructed is allowable, is possible. So you're using the term friendly made me think of intersubjectivity. But it's not objective in the philosophical sense. No. But you see, that's a terrible muddle because the word objective originally meant the opposite of subjective, yeah. which meant that it's objective if other people see it too. But then, you see, philosophers began to use objective for an ontological reality that is outside the experience. And that, that is utter nonsense. There is no such objectivity. Okay. I hear you say that originally, when speaking about objectivity, it was not used to connote an external reality. No, it wasn't originally. <laughs> Interesting. So it um, meant only that what I'm saying is more or less the same as what you would be saying. It's in, it's interpersonal, which actually makes constructivism very social. Well, if it's interactive, no, I don't agree with it. It makes our experiential reality very very social, but not because there's nothing social about constructivism. Okay. I if think you say I'm... that, you come into the domain of Mr. Gerg, Kenneth Gerg, 
the, the social constructionist. And that is not what you're talking about. Because, well, because I have nothing against Gang's yeah. idea, but he has a lot against mine. So. Well, my experience is that social constructivism still maintains an objective ontology. In some sort, yes. Whereas radical constructivism at its core negates that possibility. Yes. But it's very tricky well, because the language is very objective at this point. It's, it's nested in this idea of realism and objectivity. So it's very difficult to generate a language. It's very difficult to what? To generate, to make a language yes. that does not reflect objective ontology. Whether uh, something is considered complex is a choice. I choose to say that's complex or not. Complexity is often looked at as something undesirable. We want to resolve it somewhere. But complexity can be desirable, particularly when you look at these levels and the, and the, and the conflicts and contradictions that can happen because the opportunity then is to create something new. Again, back to Heinz. Order disorder is in how I see, not in what I'm thinking I'm seeing. But you're not talking about order disorder, you're talking about chaos. I don't agree. Okay. We'll talk later. That image of the mountains is being shown while you say what we see is what we see. It is not what is there. I know. What is there? Something like snow on the TV. And out of that we make all sorts of structures. Some structures are possible, others are not. Out of chaos comes order. Yes. There's something very interesting that you're talking about that I don't know and something that we can all disagree with. But I think that one of the problems we're having is that we don't have a true mechanism of understanding what is called a mind image plus communications. Because what happens, words are nothing more than trying to take your mind image so that you can communicate it to another person. And the problem with that is That's no matter sense. what words and language we use, is not going to be the same as the mind image of the second person. Yeah. Language is nothing more to me as the translation of your mind image to another person. That is what to me well, That's why you need narratives. Because right. it tell, each person tells you what their point of view is. Right. But it's I don't agree mind with that image. premise. A mind image is much different and a lot of words that we will use will create different mind images to another person. Yeah. And that's why I love listening to you because as you were speaking, I was able to determine my mind image trying to listen to what your mind image is through the language you're using. And I think that might be something that is, again, I, I'm very new at this and I really apologize for sounding a little no, different, but no, no. It, oh, made it, the it made it The situation is not difficult. It made it very clear to me that language is only a translator of what you mm -hmm. think. You cannot tell anybody what you think unless you attempt to try it, and a lot of times it's used by graphics, a lot of times it's used in particular words, and you use three or four different words so that one of these words would create the same mind image, and that's why we have a lot of arguments, because a person will say something and you don't agree, but you don't agree with the person or disagree with the person, you disagree with the mind image that that word has translated to you. So I look at language as a translator. Could somebody defend language cybernetically, please? The language that we use that's available to us is the traces left of 
the system we're living in. He who speaks is unfortunately an activist. He who speaks is fortunately an activist. She fortunately is an activist if she speaks. She unfortunately is an activist when she speaks. That is, every speaker has to be aware that speaking speaker is spokesman for the undesirable or a pointer at the desirable and has to be able to show which of the two the speech is doing. I thought cybernetics was the performance of things. In other words, I want idea? to do this or I want to create this. Performative ontology goal. Huh? Um, you, you're carving it up in a particular way. You're saying there's a mind image and then there's this language thing, etc. I would carve it up differently. I would okay. distribute it differently. I think it's worth a conversation and maybe a whiteboard. Um, but I think fundamentally we're in basic agreement. And I think what you're saying is not inconsistent. Uh, Jude has a way of wanting it uh, in, in a way that maybe is carving it up more distinctively. But uh, but, but when you're on the, you know, I would say that we're we're much more sympathetic. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with yeah. anyone. I yeah. just wanted well, to say. Oh, you are it. disagreeing with me. <laughs> and that's, not, that's beautiful. <laughs> Welcome to but I have a. What? The poor person is money, money, poor is money, money.